Yes, hello. Uh, we're back uh, for another episode on Eight Eagles Gather. And uh, like I said before, I tried to change a little bit the setting and the background of, uh, of my set. I'm uh, not a professional photographer or anything like that, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll do the best we can. So I'll take my hat off to everyone out there and uh, give you a greeting today. And uh, I'd like to start off with um, this session just by taking a look at some of the songs that we sing, okay? And uh, I'm not going to sing, sing them, I'm just going to kind of read them to you or whatever. And you know them, they're uh, songs of faith and Christian songs. And here goes one of them here right now. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us, give thanks. And then another one, and I've got these kind of on a sheet that uh, can be sung as a medley uh, with a group of people, one after the other. I came to glorify His name. I came to glorify His name. I came to glorify the name of the Lord. I came to glorify His name. And then one last one before I start talking about uh, today's session. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, from the mountain of His holiness, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. So there's just a few kind of words to some of the courses that we sing. And uh, yeah, so we give thanks to the Lord for every blessing that he gives us. And uh, uh, we'll carry on with this session. Now the last one was uh, kind of where to live. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, uh, in this session, how to build. And uh, we know that Canada right now is in basically a, a housing crisis. And uh, it doesn't matter, like it's a period of inflation at the same time. It's a period of uncertainty. The premiers just finished having a meeting uh, out uh, in the eastern provinces about equity to all the provinces receiving uh, whether no carbon tax or carbon tax or whatever the case may be. But anyway, okay, I did talk a little bit about where to live before, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about how to build. Well, definitely one of the questions that arises in uh, where to live cannot be adjusted by everybody the same way that I've experienced over time. And uh, a lot of people have jobs in bigger cities, whether it be uh, Winnipeg, Vancouver, Edmonton, uh, Toronto, Ottawa, Eastern Canada, or whatever. Perhaps if you were born out in those areas and you prefer to live in those areas, then a lot of the choices of where where to build or, or what to build or whatever, you know, can't be answered so easily. And definitely what they're doing is they're building. Uh, we see pictures of it on the news. Uh, the There's so much money being allotted to millions and millions of dollars of building better housing, but all of a sudden when they show this, my wife and I just get totally aghast and we say, wow, look at what they're doing. They're building bigger apartment blocks, uh, 25, 30 stories high with these little balconies uh, out on them, and uh, or they're building all of these housing. Like, I mean, housing is a different concept to different people. Like, where to live and what to build are totally two different things. But when we see them building side by side, you can jump from one rooftop to the next. The lots are so small, and they're building these houses with a basement and, and two stories. Well, definitely these places are going to cost a considerable amount of money. And it's not necessarily a solution for everybody wherever they may be living. But I want to share a couple of things with you, okay, on, uh, on how to build. And... Uh, uh, I think I mentioned in a couple of the other sessions that, uh, okay, we're living out on an acreage here. We've got 10 acres of property. We've got lots of room to build. Uh, I grew up in the north end of Brandon years ago when uh, there was lots of places to play for kids to run out in the fields right close to where our house was. But um, when my dad got back after uh, being in the Second World War and being on Juno Beach and whatnot, um, first of all, I was born in Sheridan, Manitoba, northeast of Flin Flon. He didn't like underground uh, mining, so he said, we're moving out of here, we're going down to Brandon. So what he did, and I still have pictures of this today, he bought this building that was 
almost like just covered with uh, boards that were turning gray. My mother probably wasn't too happy about it all or whatever, but uh, he bought this building, quickly went to work on it because my dad was a builder similar to what I am today, but doing a different kind of building. He set to work, he bought this house and he started putting on new siding right away. And what he basically did, he built it in stages. Uh, as the family grew, he added on to the house. The house is still standing there today. Uh, for, for us to go around, it's occupied by people. We visited the people there and said, this, this is a place where I grew up. And so what I want to talk about is, is this point and this fact. As hard as it may be to buy a lot or to decide, okay, I'm going to live in this place or that, whether it's on an acreage, out in the country or whatever, uh, if possible, uh, get a lot at the, the cheapest price that you can and sometimes that's expensive. There's building restrictions on it. But the point being here is to start small. Don't imagine this huge big structure uh, that you've, caught, you, you've got draftsmen to, to draft it out and it's uh, 2,500 square feet, 3,000 square feet or whatever the case may be. Think small. Think smaller to begin with. You're paying enough probably for a lot or an acreage, maybe on the outside of a bigger city, I don't know. Uh, wherever you choose to live or have to live, think smaller. Start to build small. Definitely, my suggestion would be to put down a basement uh, or an underground uh, uh, facility where all the electronic equipment can be put in, maybe in-floor heating, downstairs on a cement slab or whatever. That's what we have in our home here. Uh, but build small. And as time passes by, you can change your plan or do whatever you want in terms of adding to the structure. Uh, you may kind of put some sort of temporary roof on it that uh, may not have a very large pitch or whatever, but the intent there is that you've got a living quarter up top, maybe a small kind of a garage type thing or whatever, but in time when the family grows bigger or at your choice when there's more money available, that roof could come off very easy and you could even add then a second floor, second structure or even expand on one side of the smaller building uh, from one spot to the next. So all of this can be done in stages. I've visited a lot of places in my lifetime, uh, looked at a lot of possibilities as to where to live. Uh, I taught in different schools in Manitoba and things like that, experienced different styles of, of living. One of these days in an episode I'm going to uh, show you a little bit more about uh, our building style out here where we live. And uh, yeah, so it, it takes patience, it takes planning, it takes talking to other people and things like that. But my overall suggestion here, instead of looking at the government in particular to solve uh, building uh, uh, requirements or building houses or whatever, which we just kind of take a look at and shake our heads and think, oh my goodness, like what's going on here? What are they thinking about or whatever? Why don't they go to the grassroots people and talk to them about how to build and, and how to do that sort of thing? Now in the background you can see a beaver pelt over here and uh, some maple leaves over here on this side. And uh, just remember, way back in Canada's history, uh, this beaver pelt here represented money, okay? It was uh, the substitute of, uh, of dollars that uh, was uh, traded by the Métis or the full indigenous people. Uh, so many beaver pelts uh, earned you uh, a musket or a rifle or whatever the case may be. So the form of money in exchange took, took place different ways way back then. And similar things could happen today. You could have maybe a neighbor help you build or do something or whatever the case may be. But nevertheless, there are lots of solutions to certain problems or whatever. Where my wife and I are living right now, we were both working in Brandon at the time, and we found that driving on winter roads, and it's winter starting now, driving on winter roads was horrendously dangerous at certain times. Uh, we're both retired now and can just kind of enjoy sitting back and watching the snow fall and things like that or whatever. Uh, lo definitely longer times of, uh, of uh, darkness and things like that. But we got used to it. We did it once before, several years uh, in a row, and so we, we'll do it again and things like that. It just takes uh, taking life one day at a time, 
being happy and filled with joy that you're alive and, and can share the gospel with people and, uh, and tell them that, uh, hey, there, there's a better place somewhere above or whatever and uh, be assured of the fact that, that you're actually there. Um, so lots, lots of things to talk about, lots of things to do. And uh, so one last thing that uh, I want to leave with you, and I think probably this uh, session is uh, about uh, close to an end and, and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so I mean, you could have uh, pets uh, where you live, especially if you're living out in the country and whatnot, um, having uh, gardens, that sort of thing, lots of work and, and things like that to do for everybody. We know families close uh, beside us. One family, they have 11 kids. They've got lots of animals, lots of goats and sheep and all kinds of animals like that. Lots of uh, planting in uh, garden type uh, of approaches and whatnot. So lots of things to do and keep uh, kids busy. And definitely keep them away from all the garbage that's on TV and the use of cell phones and things like that. And that's coming from a logistics Christian point of view as well as from a teacher point of view. And uh, so, yeah, um, it's, uh, it's an interesting life. Uh, just keep your faith uh, strong in, in the Lord. And uh, what's happening right around the world today is uh, it's a world in, in crisis or whatever, and we don't know what's uh, happening. So just want to close this session off for now and uh, wish you the Lord's uh, richest blessings in everything that you do and everything that you think about. And don't get caught in a lot of the enemy's strategies that are out there today. But be reading your Bibles, be praying every day, husband and wife and whatnot. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon in the next session shortly coming up. Okay, bye for now.